What's up, Guitar Maniacs? It's Pete Thorne. Welcome to the studio. Hey, this is another Amps in the Zone video, and this one is all about high gain amps. I've got a bunch of different high gain heads here in the studio now, and uh, I thought I would go through them and basically tweak each one to sound as good as I could playing the same guitar riffs. And it might answer the question of, like, why does he have all those high gain amps here in the studio? What, what do I need all these amps for? Uh, so I aim to answer that in this video just through demonstrating how different they can actually sound and how they can complement one another, actually. So what I'm going to do is I've come up with a bass and drums track, and I'm going to use two different guitars. My Sir Modern, that's got uh, high output Doug Aldrich humbuckers in it, and also my EVH Wolfgang. I'm going to double track using the same amp. Okay, so in one speaker will be the Wolfgang, one speaker will be the Modern, but both parts will be, say, the PT100, or both parts will be, say, the SLO. And then I'm also going to solo the part that I played with the Sir Modern on each amp outside of the mix so that you can clearly hear with no bass or drums. And once again, what you're going to hear is each of these amps that I'm going to play in the video, just not dialed in to sound the same as one another or anything. I didn't do that. I just dialed them in for the best sound that I could for this particular riff that I was playing. So I could probably, you know, spend some time dialing them in to sound closer to one another and all that. That, that wasn't my, really my goal. I was just trying to get a great sound out of each amp. So let's start off by talking about my surf signature amps for a minute here, because these are my main squeezes, of course, my main gigging tools, my main uh, studio tools as well, really. The 100 watt PT100 has been out for a number of years now. It's a four EL34 amp with a plexi style output transformer. And on the distortion channels, it is decidedly Marshall based. I mean, that is really the lineage of where it's coming from. And then it's of course, just tweaked to perfection by John Sir to his idea of what sounds great, as well as my idea of what sounds great. We collaborate on that. Now the PT15, down here as well. This is a 15 watt version, really, really similar on the distortion channel as the 100, but when you couple uh, that preamp section to different power tubes and a different power section altogether, you're gonna end up with a slight differences in sound. And so it's got its own character going on as well. So let's start off by checking out the PT100. I dialed it in on channel two. I used the gain boost, okay? So it's got a built-in MOSFET boost, which is a really cool and unique feature about this amp. It's kind of like having a, a great pedal built into the amp, really. It can give you a nice tightening effect, as well as more saturation, more gain in the front of the amplifier. So I'm really only running the gain control in this clip on about five, and then boosting using the boost. Okay, so let's check out the tone that I got with the PT100. <laughs> All these amps are coming through the old 70s Marshall cab that I have out in the other room and it's mic'd up uh, with a 57 and an ST170 ribbon mic on a G12M 75 hertz black back speaker. Okay, next up is gonna be the PT-15 down here. Uh, let's see, I dialed it in on channel two and because this amp doesn't have the gain boost, uh, that the PT-100 has. It's a little bit more of a almost like vintage voiced affair overall because I'm not boosting it in the front end with anything. So in order to get the gain level up, I'm just boosting the gain on channel two up and I had it up around like six and a half or something like that. Whereas, you know, on the 100, like I said, I had it on five. What you're gonna notice is that it's a little bit slightly looser. It's a 15 watt amp. Uh, and also not boosting into the front end to cut lows and stuff like that. It's just gonna end up being a little bit of a more vintage, loose sound, but I think it's still a really, really cool tone. Let's check out the PT-15. Okay, next up is gonna be a Synergy preamp module. Of course, the Synergy preamps are like these kind of modular design where you can slip these preamp modules into a chassis. I really like this Engel Savage module. It's a nice tone. It's got a totally different thing. It doesn't sound like a Marshall or anything like that. It's a more grindy, I don't know, like full. The EQ has just got its own thing going on. It's quite tight though. It's a nice contrast to some of the other amps that I have in here, you'll hear how different it sounds. You can blend it with something that's more Marshall flavor and you can get a huge sound that way by, by blending the different tones.
Okay, next up we got this Laboga head. This is a head that somebody sent me to check out from Poland. And it's a, a dual EL34, uh, sort of Marshall sounding, um, but it's got real full mids. It's got a, a kind of a, almost reminds me in some ways of like, I remember like Alex Lifeson's tone on, on Limelight or something like that. But it does have a switch to tune this. So there's this three-way switch right here that lets you kind of tune the, the, the mid-range voice. And it also adds low end when it's all the way over in the far, farthest left position. I used it in the farthest right position, which sounds sort of the most balanced to me. Um, it's a two-channel amp with a clean channel and a drive side. And there's an effects loop and stuff like that. Uh, Four-band EQ, just like a Marshall Presence. Uh, bass, middle, treble. So let's check out what I did with the Laboga amp. Okay, next up is this Top Hat Implexidor head. This is a uh, basically sort of kitchen sink Marshall style amp. Some of the switches on it, like it's got this fat and treble switch on it. Evidently that gets you to more sort of like JTM 45 or more super lead. It's got a modern mode in it, which is what I used in this clip that switches in a gain boost in front of the, I guess what is sort of plexi based uh, circuit. The other thing that's on this amp is a pull bright, uh, sort of pull boost, pull bright, that just switches in a quite aggressive bright cap. So I've got that switched on and it's in the modern mode. Uh, and I should mention, I got all really nice new old stock glass in this amp. Like I think it's old Mullards and Tesla power tubes and really nice stuff in the preamp as well. But it is a terrific sounding amp that I bought for next to nothing like 20 years ago. And uh, I still keep it and you're gonna hear why, cause it sounds great. Okay, next up is this Red Germino Headroom 100 amp. I bought it with the sort of intent of having it modded. I was making that last Amps in the Zone video I did actually for Steve Vai's amp, his Jose amp, Jose modded amp. Uh, and it, that amp just kind of really intrigued me and, you know, piqued my interest. And I decided I wanted an amp with uh, those mods in it. So I found this one with the intent of having it modded. Well, it showed up here and I plugged it in and it sounded amazing, you know, just stock. Um, Germino's known for making great amps and I was almost, you know, at that point reluctant to mod it. But anyways, we went ahead and did it. Dave Friedman did the mods on it and it turned out fantastic. And the reality is I can get the sound that I had before. I feel like I didn't lose anything. Basically what he did is the full kind of kitchen sink uh, Jose Arandondo uh, mod. Two different master volumes in it actually and I can use either one. One would be uh, post EQ and one would be pre EQ. It's also got a tube in front, gain boost in front of the standard sort of Marshall Plexi circuit. That is tunable with this pot right here so you can you can set the amount of gain coming out of that first tube that hits the Plexi style you know front end. I've also got the ability to blend kind of the treble channel and the normal channel, so volume one and volume two that would be on a plexi, I can blend them without having to jumper and I don't lose any gain. Like you know when you on an old Marshall jumper the two different channels together and you'll get a little drop in gain actually. Um, and that can be fine, but if you're going for really aggressive hard rock tones, it's not a good thing. On this amp, like they're internally jumpered or whatever, and you don't lose any gain and it actually sounds amazing. I can just blend in a little bit of the volume too and get some really, really cool tones out of blending in that normal channel a little bit. The last thing is that it's got the Zener or uh, diode style limiting in it as well, and that's also selectable. So I can switch it in or out of the circuit. What does that do? Well, it just makes the amp sound a little more metal. It gives it a little bit more saturation, but it's really tight. You know, sometimes I use that, sometimes I don't. I did use it in this video because I thought it seemed appropriate for the riff that I was playing. You're gonna hear that this amp is really tight. and It's got that Marshall character uh, all the time, but um, it's got an aggressiveness to it and a teeth to it that, you know, the Jose style mods are known for. And it's just really kind of special and I, I love the tone. So let's check it out.
floor here now. Okay, last up, Soldano SLO. Of course, classic amplifier at this point. I really wanted to get one of these here for the studio just to have a different high gain flavor. I tried it out and I went, yeah, that's different enough than anything I have that that could be good to have for sessions and to add a different flavor to what I've got. It's got that big grindy Soldano tone. I don't know how else to describe it. It's a very full sound. It sounds great for single notes. It sounds really cool for rhythm stuff too. It's kind of big grain distortion. That's what I say. You know, some, some amps have like a bigger grain distortion and some have a tighter, smaller grain distortion. That could be because I love coffee so much, maybe like, you know, fine grain. <laughs> sort of think of it as more of that sort of like coarse grain distortion, which isn't to say that it sounds rough or anything. It just sounds really cool and it's got its own kind of character and grind to it. Um, incidentally, I tried this amp, which is a new one, new production one, against a really good old one recently, and I feel like this one's every bit as good as the old ones. They really did a great job recreating the amplifier, and this sounds really good to me for, for that sound that these amps make. Now, you'll hear that it's not the fastest amp in the world. It's got a little bit of a squish to it, and the more gain that you add, that of course increases. It's not nearly as like tight as the Germino, for instance, or even as my PT-100. It's got its own thing when it comes to that, but it is a really great sound, harmonically dense, rich, very big sounding. Let's get to it, the Soldano SLO-100. So there you have it, a whole bunch of different amps. But now I wanna show you one more thing, which is the real reason why I have a bunch of different amps around in the studio. Yes, it's for variety, you know, for individual parts and individual tones, but also one thing I love to do is when I'm doing something heavy uh, part-wise, I like to double or even triple track it and use different amps. So what I'm gonna do now is I bounce down a mix of the PT-100 in the left channel the Germino in the right channel, and the SLO up the middle. And I want you to listen how huge this sounds when you blend all three of those amps playing the same part. Let's check it out.
complexity and a dense tone that you just can't get by using the same amp, you know, if you double and triple track. That can be cool too, but the variety and kind of just where one amp, you know, maybe doesn't have certain frequencies, the other one will, and how they fill in the gaps for one another, it's just kind of magic, blending different amps all together like that. Some great guitar players with terrific heavy guitar tones, like Adam from Tool, for instance, is, uh, I believe he has a, a Marshall Super Bass of some sort, I think is one of his amps, like a 73 or 74 or something like that. Basically four hole Marshall circuit, and he uses that, and then he's always blending that, it seems, with a more modern amp, like a diesel or dual rectifier. And that blended tone is what makes his sound so complex and cool. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Be interested to read some of your comments down in the comment section below. And hey, please hit subscribe if you haven't. Hit the little bell beside the subscribe. You will get an alert every time I put out a new video. I'm Pete Thorne. I'll see you real soon. Take care. Over now.